Hey everyone, it's Ben Hardy here, and in today's video, I'm going to be reviewing a Ram 3500 cab and chassis. Before we get in this video, though, a huge shout out and thank you to the Larry Miller Dodge Ram here in Provo, Utah, for giving me some time with this truck. I'm going to include a link to that inventory in the description down below so you can check out what they have currently. If you have any questions or need any help, just ask for Josh. And then on a side note, if you want to save time and money, the next time you purchase a car, link to my car buying guide in the description down below. Let's get into it. So under the hood of this truck is a naturally aspirated 6.4 liter Hemi V8 that goes through a six speed automatic transmission. If you guys are wondering, it's the six speed Ison. Now the interesting thing about this truck is going to be the power outputs. And this is directly from Ram's website. So it states that this has 370 horsepower at 4,600 RPMs. And then it states in parentheses, 410 horsepower at 5,600 RPMs under 10,000 pound gross vehicle weight rating. So I guess we'll check the GVWR a little bit later. And then it states 429 pound feet of torque at 4,000 RPMs. Now, before we go over the front end, I do want to mention if you want to see more videos just like this, then I recommend you subscribe because I post content every single day. So starting at the top, actually, you guys can see that we've got the cab lights there at the top of the truck. We've got a 3500 heavy duty badge here on the side. And then you guys can see normal Ram hood here at the top. Now I've got halogen lights up front, uh, no fog lights on this truck, and then you guys can see with the chrome accenting on the front end, but notice the grill itself has been blacked out. We've got tow hooks here at the bottom, and then you guys can kind of hopefully see the air dam there at the very bottom for aerodynamic efficiency. And putting it all together, this basically looks like any other Ram, like Tradesman from a front end perspective, obviously with all the chrome uh, added to it. Coming around the side here, our tire wheel setup is 275, 70, 18 in the front and over in the rear as well. And then you guys can see with the wheels, you've got chrome to match all of the chrome on the front end. Now taking a look at the shocks and suspension here on the front end, it looks very similar to other 3500s that I have reviewed. And then you guys can see it has a solid front axle. Now I've got a Ram logo here on the side, and then look how small these side steps are. It's like the world's tiniest side step. And then this has the new style of trailer mirrors. We'll dive into those a little bit later. And then notice it says SLT there on the side, and then the door handle matches the mirror in coloration. And then taking a look at the full side view, obviously the truck looks kind of dorky because, well, it's a cabin chassis, so you literally just have the cab, and then you have the chassis. So like no bed, which yeah, always looks strange. I mean like normal? Not as normal, I suppose. But since this is a cabin chassis, we can see a lot of cool stuff that we can't see in a normal truck. First off, look at the leaf springs here in the back. I think that is pretty crazy to see all of that exposed. And then you guys can see the exhaust. I mean, look how it kind of like wraps up and then around and then comes up through here and then pops like down <laughs> again. This is so fun to follow actually. Yeah, that's huge by the way. And then you guys can see it goes all the way like loops through to the front. It's crazy to see all the twists and turns that like the exhaust takes on a pickup truck. And you probably noticed that this does have a full sized spare tire. Um, it's an 18 inch wheel, 275. Let's make sure, yeah, 275, 70, 18. So it's exactly the same as the other ones. It's obviously just black instead of chrome like the other wheels. Now the other thing to note while we're back here is it looks like this is the fuel tank here for the truck and well, that confirms it. <laughs> We've got the cap just uh, dangling here outside. But yeah, it's also interesting to see. Now with cabin chassis, you actually can also get auxiliary fuel tanks. I'm not seeing anything extra with this one. I'll double check the window sticker when I'm done with the uh, walk around or you know, I'll show that to you guys as well. But uh, that's another thing with the cabin chassis that's interesting to add. Now these specs I'm about to go over come from Ram's website. They are on a single cab. 3500 cabin chassis SLT 4x4 just like what this is. It says payload up to 5140, which is pretty high. Um, towing capacity up to 20,490. Gross vehicle weight rating 14,000 pounds. And then it says gross cargo weight rating 27,500 pounds. And then some other fun stuff is obviously you guys can see the lights here on the back that are just uh, hanging out. Um, but what you won't notice is a backup camera. So what the cabin chassis will typically come with is a backup camera that you have to like install yourself. And the reason they have you install it is so that after you put your bed or whatever you want to put on the truck, then you can put the camera where it makes the most sense. 
So now that we've gone over some of the specs of the truck, let's quickly talk about what you could actually use this truck for. Like, why would you buy this instead of one of these pickup trucks with a regular truck bed? Um, so first off, uh, one use for it is you could put a flatbed on the truck and the utility of a flatbed is usually gooseneck towing is gonna be a little bit better. But again, this truck is not a diesel and so this is probably not gonna be a tow truck. This being a 60 inch cab to axle with a gas engine means that this truck's probably all about maximizing payload because the 6.4 Hemi weighs less than the Cummins. And then having the shorter cab to axle means that this would probably be converted into a dump truck. That is my best guess uh, for what this would be used for because then again you're maximizing payloads and also you know when you're doing dump truck stuff like yeah you need power to be able to move the stuff but <laughs> you don't need as much power as what you would need uh, for towing. So my assumption is this truck's probably never going to have a receiver hitch and it'll have a big old bucket put on the back and it'll probably be used to haul stuff. Um, but let me know what you guys would use this truck for uh, given the specs like what you do flatbed would you do dump truck or would you do other types of conversion another conversion with this i'm not sure if it's long enough for it um could be like an ambulance that's another thing uh, that these cabin chassis will be used for is like an ambulance vehicle because again you just put that uh, the whole ambulance thing on the back of it and so there's just so much utility with this and that's why they build trucks like this without beds because i mean imagine if you bought one of these and then had to take off the bed to then put something else on that's like so much more expensive than just buying this and being able to put whatever you want on the back by yourself Realized I forgot to show the key fob. It's just Ram's regular key fob here. It's got unlock lock function and yeah, that's that's about it. Now I find single cab Rams hilarious because basically what they do is they take Rams regular door panel, which is actually really nice. I mean, look at this door panel. We've got this nice like trim here, cloth trim, really nice padding where you're gonna rest your arm. We've got the window controls, which by the way, front windows are automatic. Well, those are the only windows because it's a two door. Anyways, you got your mirror adjustments. This is for the convex mirror and here are the new style of mirrors. Um, so with this particular truck, um, it doesn't look like it has the extend function or anything like that. You just have the mirror adjustment. Um, but anyways, the thing I was wanting to mention is like just plastic here. So like, look at this nice, like padded material. And just, cause it's just an extension to make it so that this works with like the single cab format. But you do get like a little storage pocket down there. And then also on the bottom portion, I just find it hilarious. Well, I wanted to make sure before I popped into the truck, but you can actually extend these mirrors. You guys can see I have it extended out. It's just manual with the operation instead of automatic, so you gotta use a little bit of uh, muscle to get it out. So one of the benefits of going uh, single cab is you actually do get storage behind the front seats. You can see this little like storage bucket that goes across. And yes, you still have all the hookups for a car seat, um, but that's the first benefit. Now the next benefit is actually gonna be right here. So gross vehicle weight rating, you guys probably can't see in camera because it's in shadow, 11,000 pounds. So that's less than the 14,000 pounds that the website says. But um, anyways, the reason that that 11,000 pounds is important is because this is a single cab, you're gonna have more payload because if you had, you know, two more doors, right? That would be more weight that would be taken for the cab rather than for, you know, stuff that you wanna put on the bed, if that makes sense. Hopefully, I, I think that makes sense. So it makes it so that the cabin part of the truck is lighter, so then you have more available payload, basically. Anyway, speaking of the cabin, we actually have these really nice leather seats very luxury for a work truck and you guys can see power adjustments here on the side and then you got like all your pedals and then a little pedal there for the brake and then light controls right here and then the steering wheel is manually adjustable Now taking a look at the steering wheel, we actually have a nice leather trim all around. We've got stitching there on the center, which is darker to match. Radio controls on the back of the steering wheel. We've got a cruise control with our gear limiter, voice command, phone controls, and then controls there for the center stack. And then a regular turn signal windshield wiper stock. And then we have a good old fashioned column shifter with the truck too. Now, when it comes to the gauge cluster, it's just Ram's mostly analog gauge cluster. So you do have this center screen, which you can scroll through to see different bits of info on the truck. Obviously the most important one's gonna be your uh, fuel economy, right? Um, but yeah, just like other Rams, it, it shows you all the same information there in the center. Now I want to show that I'm in reverse to show you guys that, again, no backup camera hooked up or anything like that. But going over to the infotainment screen, um, first off, response time with the screen. It's pretty good. It's got the mouse thing turned on. Um, but anyways, you guys can see we've got dual zone climate here with this truck. And so, yeah, even though this is a work truck, you still have like a modern infotainment system. And above the infotainment system, you guys can see the dash here. Again, more basic, which would be easier to clean off. Got a 12 volt there at the top, and you can see the darker trim here at the top as well. 
And then down below, we've got analog radio controls. We also have our dual zone climate controls, heated seats for the front, heated steering wheel as well. And you get your tow haul mode, your stability control, trailer brake controls integrated from the factory. And then we have six different auxiliary switches, which I think is very important for this type of pickup truck because, I mean, adding on a bed and everything else that goes with the bed, you're surely going to use at least a couple of these auxiliary switches. Again, especially like as like a dump truck, like I can imagine, um, like if you wanted the bed to like extend up, then you maybe you have like auxiliary one is the, the function that like makes the bed extend up and then auxiliary two could be the thing that opens up the tailgate to dump the stuff out of the bed for example and then you guys can see we've got our two-wheel drive four-wheel high and then four-wheel low true neutral as well and then we've got a bunch of usb ports down below with some extra storage space below that now this has the bench seat configuration so this opens up to be a storage space with it's got a usb in there got some cup holders here on the front section sorry about the lighting that's horrible and then it turns up to be a seat and then there's more storage underneath as well which actually like stays like the lid stays in place which is pretty cool but one thing to uh note is that well legroom's not gonna be great because you got the driveline hump now we've got the like top glove box thing but obviously it doesn't close and then you've got the bottom glove box which does open and close like a regular glove box we do have lights here at the top as you can see and then this one just has a regular mirror um, nothing fancy happening with the roof and then if you guys are wondering the rear glass here is fixed so here's our window sticker for this cabin chassis again this is an slt you guys can see the base msrp 48655 and then like i said 64 hemi with the six speed ice in and uh, i love that it says job rated as standard equipment that's hilarious um, but we also have an anti-spin differential in the rear so that is another important thing to mentioned and then 52 gallon so that's 52 gallons holy guacamole that is a lot of fuel that you can put into this uh truck um but you guys can see the rest of the standard equipment now optional equipment so leather seats that's 1500 bucks and then so front armrest with cup holders 3700 bucks 18 inch wheels wow that's that's a lot for i mean <laughs> that's crazy how much they're charging for that stuff but it is what it is. I guess that's what you got to do. And then the uh, transmission is a thousand bucks too. That's interesting. Um, chrome side steps, and then you got the U Connect. Wow, it's cr they're like nickel and diming for everything on this truck. Anyways, um, destination charge. Wow, two thousand dollars almost. There's your warranty. So it's just like a regular gas uh, Ram for the warranty. Nothing different. Fifty nine thousand six fifty though for the price. And with that being said, <laughs> wow, let's sum things up. Well, let's talk about visibility here in this truck. Here's the visibility of the hood, both of the mirrors, and then throughout the rest of the rear. And something that I do need to mention is I will not be taking this truck off of the lot today. Um, we're just doing mostly like a walk around type video on this. Um, this truck is uh, pre-sold, and so out of respect for the future owner, we're not going to be driving this off of the lot. But what we can do is test out the turning radius, which is not great. <laughs> <laughs> not great at all it's such a small truck so you'd think it'd be like in terms of like the overall length you think it'd be a good turning radius but no it's it's not now just driving through the parking lot it is so rough i mean it's 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 even like rougher than a regular 3500 but that's the thing about these i mean just i'm like bobbing up and down a little bit that's the thing about these cabin chassis is like until you load up those rear leaf springs yeah, you're going to be in for a rough ride. Um, I sold a few of these when I worked at the Ram dealership. And that's what everyone told me that uh, bought these trucks is they're like, yeah, Ben, these things ride horrible, especially on the highway. But once you get that bed loaded up, it just, it drives so buttery smooth. Um, so yeah, sure that applies to this truck as well. Um, but you know, I kind of talked about some use cases in the walk around portion. And I, I think those are pretty practical for this. Um, again, I think this is more of what I would call like a payload truck rather than a towing truck. Again, if you wanted to go for the towing truck, then you'd want to get the uh, diesel engine, not the 6.4 Hemi. It's not like the 6.4 Hemi can't tow, but everyone knows that's towed that diesel is just so much better the torque that you get the fuel economy that you get as well also parking this is super weird because no backup camera i know i'm so spoiled i'm used to using backup cameras um but also like not having a bed so literally what i'm doing is i'm just looking at the the tires seeing where those are actually 
This kind of makes parking a big truck like this a little bit easier than normal because I have such a clear view there of the tire. That's actually kind of cool. So I can tell exactly. That's so weird. Just like seeing no bed. But also, look at this. I can like perfectly line up. Boom. I'm like right there on the curb. This is actually the easiest pickup truck to park ever because you don't have a bed in the way. That's so genius. Um, but anyways, let me know what you guys think about the cabin chassis. Let me know what you would use this truck for um, if you were to purchase one. Um, again, I, I think that this is more of a payload truck. And if you guys want to see more cabin chassis reviews in the future, they're kind of hard to put together because um, these are just, they're not like all that. I know it seems like this would be super common because it's a work truck, but like they're not all that common on dealer lots because a lot of these are sold um, via fleet uh, deals. This particular one wasn't a fleet deal. And so I'll try to get a hold of as many as I can if you guys want to see the content on these. So let me know about that and I'll see you.